So what are the biophysiological mechanisms of, what was I talking about? ADHD. ADHD. What are the advantages and the disadvantages of having an ADHD brain? All right, so I'm gonna break this down to you guys in like a seventh grade level, because probably some of you guys are in seventh grade, right? I'm talking to you. So, so basically there are a couple of theories on how ADHD is developed or how, why ADHD happens to certain individuals, right? So about 7% of the general public has ADHD, right? And then they think that boys get ADHD more often than girls. The reason why they have like a brain that's wired to be ADHD is because of you know several factors. And we think that these all these factors kind of combine together to create how it how it works so the first factor is genetics so you know you get some genes from your mom and some genes from your dad and you know when, you know like you know what I'm talking about and then when you're born you get you inherit some from your mom and you inherit some from your dad and then in some cases people have inherited these uh, traits or these genes from their parents that make them susceptible to ADHD. The second factor is environmental factors and these environmental factors could have been something you were exposed to you know when you were when you, when your mom was pregnant or something you were exposed to when you were a kid like you know pesticides or alcohol or cigarettes or other things that affected how your brain developed that was different from how you know someone else's brain developed who was not exposed to those kind of things. And the third mechanism that we think is happening is that some people have certain genes and those genes get activated when certain environmental conditions are present. So you might be more susceptible to ADHD and then you get exposed to some kind of chemical or pesticide or some kind of interaction when you were a kid or when, you, when your mom was pregnant and that activates a cascade of changes that you know change your brain from a normal brain to a person with ADHD. Those are the three prevalent or the main theories that we have to why ADHD happens or what causes ADHD. Now let's jump into how those, uh, how those causes actually change the brain itself. How does a brain of a ADHD person differ from a brain of a normal person? You're a mutant. You're a freak. You're a mutant. You have ADHD. You are <coughs> stuck. <coughs> you're stuck, right? Okay, you're not stuck. Your mom is all right. She probably drank a lot, but whatever. Let's just, let's not blame her. Let's blame yourself, okay? Because you're a freak. You probably got some freak genetics from your grandpa or grandma or whatever, and now you got you're stuck. Now, what does that mean? What is your how is your brain different from normal people's brain, right? Let me explain. So there's two main differences between an ADHD brain and a normal brain. The first main difference is that. In ADHD brain, the catecholamine system is not as effective as a normal brain. And the second difference is executive functions in a ADHD brain is not as well developed as a normal brain. So what does that mean? So in a normal brain, there is a part of your brain that's called the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex kind of decides on the higher functioning things. So like problem solving, deciding on what thoughts are important, what actions are important, controlling impulses. Those are, uh, those are decided by this thing called the prefrontal cortex. And in an ADHD person, that part of their brain develops much slower than in a normal person. So let's say that you are like 13 years old. You, if you have you know, ADHD, you might have a prefrontal cortex that's as developed as maybe like a 10 year old. So you're lagging a little bit behind than normal. So this prefrontal cortex is really important because it helps us decide on what to do. And it's, it's kind of, you can kind of think of it like a the manager. This is like a really crude example, but it's like the manager that runs our brain. Now in a normal brain, your manager shows up five days a week, right? And maybe on like two days, like Saturday and Sunday, your brain kind of gets to do whatever it wants. On an ADHD person, the manager shows up like on Thursdays and Fridays. And the rest of the time, you know, you get to do whatever you want. So that's kind of the idea of this prefrontal cortex not developing as fast as a normal person. The second thing is about this catecholamine system. The catecholamine system is kind of like the system that 
catecholamine and dopamine system, those are the systems that are related to motivation. So a person with ADHD needs a lot more dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter. It's, it's like a chemical that tells your brain, oh, you're happy, keep doing this. You need more of those chemicals inside your brain for your brain to actually feel motivated to do something. Another part of this, this puzzle piece is a lot of the times a person with ADHD has a hard time regulating the emotions because the prefrontal cortex is kind of in charge of figuring out what emotions are good to have and what emotions you just need to shut off, right? So when the manager is not there to shut off those bad emotions, you know, you can kind of lose control of yourself or you can kind of lose control of the parts of your brain that will make you do things that you shouldn't normally do. So we have a hard time getting motivated. We have a hard time deciding on what thoughts are important and what thoughts we just need to let go. And we have a hard time figuring out what like what stimulus we need to respond to. So if you see like a rabbit running, we're like, oh, this, that's important because our manager is not there telling us, get back to work, right? Because that might be the day that the manager took a day off, you know? So three disadvantages. And in the next part, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna tell you about the really cool superpower ADHD people have that normal people simply don't have access to. And it's, it's a really good trade off. I'd rather have this superpower with ADHD than not have this superpower, but have a brain without ADHD. Bar none, this thing is really dope, it's awesome. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you guys to subscribe. If you like this video, you can hit the like button to support the channel, and let me know your thoughts on the comment section. Thanks again, see you next time.